Zeg maar als die kan. En als het... Ja, is goed. Oké. Okay. Je zou hem allemaal moeten kennen. Lester Butler. Hij speelde in de Red Devils en hij heeft nu zijn band 13, opvolger van de Red Devils. Hij heeft twee gigantisch mooie platen gemaakt. Klassiekers in het genre. Blues. Ja, rock zou je zeggen. Maar het is eigenlijk punk blues of blues punk or whatever you call it. Uh, hij zit hier naast me en we gaan uh, met hem praten over... Het een en ander en vooral over muziek. Hi Lester, welcome at Cult Television. How you doing? I heard you came on bike to this place. Yes, you gotta have a bike in Amsterdam. <laughs> it's good, <laughs> but it's yeah. not, not really blues as you said. I know, God, I can't help it. You were um, born in Virginia? Yes, yes, I was born in Virginia, uh, in the south. Mm -hmm. what, what sort of family are you from? Just a normal uh, upbringing family, you know. I don't know why, how they had me. I'm just a troubled child of the, of the group, <laughs> the black sheep. And when you were very young, you started playing the, the harp at the age of six or something like that? Yes. Uh, six years old, I had a toy. You know, it was a toy. Mm -hmm. And I just heard the Sonny Boy and the Walter on the radio and... You know, as uh, time progressed, I started playing in bands, and it just came naturally. So I've been playing, yeah, since I was very young. Why was it? Because you're from a white family that you started listening to the black blues music. Uh, black people used to take care of me, actually. That's how I kind of got into it. Yeah. And one, you uh, moved to L.A., mm -hmm. and then one of the, the big mentors you met there was Hollywood Fats. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was a good friend, Hollywood Fats. Um, he turned me on to all the records and uh, introduced me really to the different styles uh, in depth, in depth. And then when he died, you decided to go on stage and do your own thing. It's really ironic. If he wouldn't have died, I don't know if I'd be playing music right now. It was a weird situation because he was such a great player. I was stifling, you know. But um, when he died, yeah, I started started playing at that point on. But when when you started playing, you always mixed blues and punk music. Well, blues, um, more not really punk per se, musically, technically, but more of the attitude of thrashing and being more wild than the other blues bands that we saw around. And it just sort of comes natural, I guess. But, you know, we do, we play low down blues, which to me was sort of like, Howlin' Wolf was sort of like punk rocker in his day. You know, the things that Howlin' Wolf would do were so outrageous that it was kind of the same wild wildness of a punk show. The same with like R.L. Burnside or, uh, you know, R.L. and John Spencer work together also. Mm -hmm. But where, where does the feeling come from? Right here. Emotions and the heart, you know. I, sometimes I wonder myself why I play blues the way I do. And it just, it's in, it's in me. It's just part of my soul. Couldn't you, you put your finger on, 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 on the seeds or the roots of this feeling? Well, it's so deep in my, my being, my childhood, that it just comes, you know, it's, I've heard the music all my whole life. And it just comes from my inner self. That's the only way I can really explain it. <laughs> it just comes out, it's in me. Mm -hmm. um. The, um, in the band, you also have a very different approach. There are no solos or real solos in, in, in the songs. Oh, in the, in, on the album? On the album, yeah. with the Red Devils and with 13 as well. Oh, you mean the big long thing? Well, it's a little, little different approach um, than a lot of, <clears throat> you know, I try not to be as typical as I can, but live I, I play longer. But just for records, it just seems appropriate, you know, to go with, I just felt like going with a more sparse approach.
But if you listen to chess recordings, you're going to hear one chorus, a shorter solo also. So it's, in fact, the old-fashioned way. Well, it is, yes, it is, and it's the new-fashioned way. And it's just, it's, I, I just go, I try and be unique and different from everybody else. But in fact, you're not, because you're doing I am what and the... I'm not, and I'm M, and I'm not, and you know, it's just... I love it, and I have we we have our own style, and uh, you know, which is more of a rougher style than you're going to hear from most bands. Hopefully, you're you're uh, playing harp, you're singing, but you're also sort of a conductor or musical director in the yeah. band. Uh huh. Yeah, I drive the other musicians crazy with my motions, and I'm like a traffic cop. <laughs> you know. So what what you say is the law in the band? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Musically, you know, it's it's a lot easier if the band has a it's a band sort of like a body that <laughs> you can only have one head, <laughs> you know, yeah. or it just gets too confusing. Is it also the reason why the Red Devil split? Partially, yeah. Uh, Because um, uh, the guitar player um, Jimmy Rip said it's uh, if you put five strong-headed guys in a band. It's, it's bound to split or sure. it's hard yeah. to keep them together. Sure, exactly. Yeah, Jimmy's a good friend. He knows what he's talking about. <laughs> he had the rhythm, our rhythm guitar player on his album yeah. from the Red Devils. Mm -hmm. You've heard his album? Jimmy's? Yeah. Oh, of course, yeah. What do you think of it? I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah I love it. He mixes different styles. Yes, he does. He's, I, I really dug the album. Mm-hmm. Um, on the sleeve of uh, 13 mm -hmm. needs some explanation because if you if you look at it, it's sort of a astrology signs on it. Yeah. Who who made the, the sleeve and why? I made the sleeve. Yeah. Yeah. The hand is symbolic of like free will mm -hmm. and different things that influence your free will. You know the sun beliefs and. Since people see the cross, it's really the sign of the cross, uh, cross between man and intelligence, you know, and it's just the different things that influence your free will. That makes uh, life full of decisions. Yeah. Is it hard for you? Oh, isn't it hard for everyone? <laughs> it's great, too, though, you know, we love it. Mm -hmm. But is it hard to deal with it? No, I don't know any other way. I mean, <laughs> you know, the whole idea behind the 13 thing is a victim of a tragic circumstance rising above, you know, which is... Because when I when I hear 13, and with the Red Devils as well, and I heard you singing, I heard your harmonica play out, it was almost like you had hellhounds on your trail. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> they've, been, uh, they've been leaving me alone lately, but they definitely have been on my trail. So you sing from your own experience? Of course, yes. And, and Plague of Madness, is it also your own experience? Yes. Is it your madness? Yes, I, my madness. I went insane in the studio, and you have it on tape. You have it uh, right there for yourself. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's real madness. It's like the same madness music? Howlin' Wolf ha has in his music. I have, well, thank you. I, yeah, music, I mean, it's just emotions. You know, and I felt crazy, and so I played a crazy tune. <laughs> um, you know, one of your big examples is Little Walter. Mm -hmm. He's known for his rough lifestyle, booze and drugs. And you're known for that lifestyle as well. Uh, you mean the secret's <laughs> out? <laughs> I'm being good now, yeah. Um, but you, you, I like you, to have a good time, you know. <laughs> I like to have a good time, but uh, sometimes things will get out of hand too, you know, and just a lot of times you lose friends or songs about the whole losing of friends and the whole deal on the album. And it's sort of music, you know, what you're going to bring to the table is your life. And you can't really pretend to be something. It's not like I went out to prove that, oh, yeah, you know, that's the most typical thing. I'm the ghetto kid or whatever, because it's it's really not true. But <clears throat> a lot of things have happened to me. And, you know, it's a lot of 
the people I grew up with and my people, you know, we're go all going through that same problems and, you know, a lot of, it's a modern society, you know, it's a lot of that kind of action. And I grew up in the city, you know, and, uh, you know, a lot of it's really good too. A lot of it's really good too. You know, a lot of it's fun. But you need the city life also for inspiration. Sure. Yeah, I mean, sometimes I wonder, you know, what happens if things get good <laughs> and I, I don't have to deal with uh, all this tragic circumstance and whatnot. But uh, you can always write about hope and faith, which I try and, I try and keep in my everyday life. The first album from the Red Devils, King King, was a live album recorded at the King King Club in L.A. Um, Rick Rubin produced it. This album is a studio album, but it's almost more raw. It's like you were playing live in the studio. We were playing live in the studio. And it's all in one ta take? Uh, a lot of them were in one take, yeah. And we put some guitars on stuff and, and re-sang things, but the songs and the music was, came from one take. And it's very, the way blues is, there's so much interaction. Um, it's hard to do it any other way. And if you do it another way, it sounds real clean. And, the, you know, we started that way. We started in that manner. And it just wasn't the essence of what we wanted to hear. So we, after I fought with the producers for a couple days, uh, I just grabbed the microphone and started singing right into it and went in the room with the band and broke down the barriers and whatnot for all the instruments. Yeah, I'm sure you've been in the studio and have the every amp's in a little closet, you know, and just went into the, the studio and, and dealt with it the way we, we played. Mm -hmm. There was also a rumor after the, the King King album that you would do some recordings with uh, Mick Jagger, yeah. Johnny Cash, mm -hmm. and I heard you did, but what happened to the tapes? Well, the the Mick Jagger tape is out, and uh, somebody got a hold of it, and uh, it's a bootleg now. But the Johnny Cash is still in the vault <laughs> right now. And it won't come out? Uh, I don't know. It's hard to, that's a hard question to answer when you deal with people like Johnny Cash and Mick Jagger, and you're dealing with a corporation, you know? So you can just cross your fingers. But you can find the Jagger uh, material out. It's still on bootleg. Oh, yeah. It's underground, way underground. But isn't it strange that there's no record company interested enough? Or is it just that Mick Jagger and Johnny Cash are afraid that when they put this album out, <laughs> your name will be higher on the list? Well, I think with Mick, uh, you have to have millions of dollars involved. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like a country or something. It's not like a... Not like a uh, I mean, there's so much involved. It's, it's so, it's on a scale that's just gigantic. <clears throat> I think he might have known that it came out on bootleg and maybe he was even the one that put it out. <laughs> Because he's a smart businessman. I think he was the only one with the tapes, as far as I know. <laughs> so, makes you wonder. Yeah, there you have it. You're doing a, a promotion tour now. Uh, you're playing in the Paradiso um, Friday night. After this tour, you're going to Russia, going to Spain, then? Then back home for more of the same, and then, you know, take a couple months rest and uh, come back to Holland, hopefully, with, uh, I'd like to come back to Holland two or three times a year, at least, because I love it so much. But are you going to work on a new album? Uh, that's always happening. I mean, it's not even up to me. The songs come in to my head like it's uh, an antenna or something yeah. or they come up from below maybe they bubble up <laughs> so yeah we're we're working on a new album right now but the Even way the way you say it the, the song song songs come up is it it's very easy for you to write well it's i don't sit down and say i'm going to write a song uh, sometimes i'll wake up here you know just it'll already yeah. be there And uh, a lot of times that's what happens. I'll wake up and, uh, you know, I hear it. But I just, usually songs come after some sort of a, 
experience of, you know, trauma or great happiness or whatever. <laughs> so, yeah, they usually come after some sort of an emotional thing. And that's, what, that's what I do. I write, I try and just, you know, go up with an emotional yeah. response. Because that's blues. It's music, it's art, you know. I, I don't care if it's, it's, it's music or painting or whatever. Uh, it's basically the, what an artist does is they transfer an emotion into the medium that they're working with. You, you don't want to label music. You're, you also played with uh, Rancid. So no borders, no limits, no labels? No, 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 no. That's against the whole idea, I think. Of, of music and expressing yourself and just being your own self. Okay, I want you to keep up the spirit and write a lot of beautiful songs and do the good stuff with bands, play music, make records, right. play live, because I want to hear more, more, more. And I really want to thank you for being here in the show thank and you. wish you best of luck in the Paradiso. I want to thank you. I want to thank all the people in Holland, too, for coming out and supporting us and, you know, treating us so right also. You're the one that made the music, so... Well, it's mutual. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Lester Butler, hij speelt vrijdagavond in Paradiso. En je bent gek als je er niet bij bent, want het is bij leven al een legende. En ga ook naar de platenzaak en haal die plaat van hem, 13. Met uh, staan 13 ontzettend mooie nummers op. Kippenvel, echt van hier tot hier. Goose pimples all over when you listen to this one. En als je dan toch bezig bent en je vindt hem goed, haal dan ook nog even die plaat van de Red Devils. King King, live in de King King Club. Komt ongeveer op hetzelfde neer, net zo goed. Wat kan ik anders zeggen dan? Kijk nog even naar een paar opnamen die wij in Malou Malou hebben gemaakt van Lester Butler en band 13. Thank you very much. Right.